Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today I'm going to get into uh, sports at the college level. My guest today is Kelly Kish. She is the Director of Athletics at Wingate University, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Anthony. I'm excited to visit with you today. Yeah, so uh, Kelly, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? I went to the University of Florida for both undergrad and my graduate degree, and, and I actually grew up in Gainesville, Florida, so was surrounded by higher education in that university my entire life, um, you know, through college, and then I worked in the athletic department, too, so very much a Gator through and through, orange and blue, and uh, that's the nice thing about now working at a Division II institution is I can uh, really support my alma mater and also know that Wingate is my, uh, is my top choice for schools and to support with our programs. Great. So uh, let's just go back in time before we get into uh, Wingate. Um, so uh, in high school, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year uh, high school, uh, senior year high school? When did it all begin for you? It was definitely early in high school. I would say probably that ninth grade year, I, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster at that point in time. And so I was taking our television production classes responsible for like, you know, the, the daily news announcements that we did and some highlight video stuff. And so knew that um, sports broadcasting is where I wanted to go. And at the time, University of Florida had a top 10 sport journalism school. Um, so really that honed in my focus on University of Florida pretty early because of um, that career path that I, at that point, was uh, aiming toward. Wow, fantastic. So now you go to University of Florida. Uh, what's the school like? Tell us a little bit about the experience that you had when you were there. I loved my experience at the University of Florida. Um, you know, you're in some very large classes, um, some of the like general education and whatnot. But then when I got into my major, and again, that was telecommunication and production, um, you were in a smaller setting, you know, doing studio work. Uh, at that point, we were doing radio still as well. And, you know, some different pieces there that that was really hands-on and, and a smaller cohort. Um, but at the same time, you got to experience so many different classes to fill those electives in that general education because the university is so large and has so many different options. And so you can uh, learn and listen and get a feel for a lot of different um, subject matters. Wow, fantastic. So now uh, once you graduate from the university and, and you graduate from, uh, of course, grad school, um, how does one go from there to becoming the athletic director at Wingate University? So I actually, I was about seven classes away from finishing my undergraduate degree when I realized I wanted to be on the other side of the camera and impact the stories that were, uh, that I was reporting on. Instead, I wanted to be impacting those students. And so I, my minor was sport management. And so I um, still finished my undergraduate degree in the telecommunication production because I was so close to graduating, knowing in the back of my mind that I would, um, uh, maybe hone in on that for my master's degree. And so I started working and uh, at the University of Florida in the athletic department while I was slowly finishing my undergraduate, knowing I was looking for that career shift and I needed to find a, a, a job in a, in a way to start to be exposed to that area. So I was working in that athletic department, finished my undergraduate degree, and then was also able to pursue my master's and that is in sport management. And again, I had a minor in that, so I had some exposure to it, but then obviously took a much deeper dive into it with the master's program um, in the graduate level work that I completed um, it in. So really it was a mindset shift to me of realizing, although I was reporting on Jaguar training camp or um, at, you know University of Florida athletics and you know all the things going on in the, in the community, they're close to Gainesville and where I grew up and where I was then now a student, I wanted to have that impact and be uh, on the administrator side of having, uh, helping students tell their story and making it happen for them. So, so you're there for a little while before you get the, the job at uh, Wingate? Yes. So then I, uh, I worked at University of Florida for nine years. 
Um, and then I transitioned to Division II um, and some different institutions that I worked at and uh, worked my way up to becoming an athletic director. I was a strong number two um, at multiple schools, knowing I wanted to eventually be an athletic director. And um, I had a stop uh, as an athletic director at a different school. And then I was back in this area working at Winthrop University. And then this opportunity presented itself. So I just had to move across Charlotte over here to Wingate and back to Division Division two um, to lead really a, a tremendous and premier institution in Division two. So now you've been there for quite a while. Uh, I started in January, oh, so um, I am new to Wingate. Um, but again, this is my I, I have been an athletic director before and at multiple institutions, part of the athletic senior staff. Um, but this to Wingate, I am um, new since January and, and I'm just loving it a few months in. It's been great. Great. So now uh, at Wingate University, um, what does the athletic director do? Well, we have 24 sports. Um, well, and actually the 24th will play for the first time this fall in field hockey. Um, but, you know, we have the coach here recruiting and all that. So we have 24 sports that we're supporting um, every day. Um, a lot of what I'm doing when I, since I first started in January is I'm having um, what I call SWAT meetings, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And I'm meeting with every single one of our staff members to understand kind of, hey, where do I need to put my efforts, my um, my really like highlight and uh, put toward the top of my agenda and kind of prioritize as I'm looking at how can we become a better department? How do we better support our student athletes and our staff? And then across campus, I'm involved in a lot of meetings. So not just internally focused, but then actually externally focused too to understand our, you know, our friends and admissions and how do we help them? Our friends over in um, academic support services, how do we help our student athletes continue to have great academic experiences? You know, there's a lot of pieces of just listening and learning, but also partnerships and growing the opportunity to, to successfully support our student athletes. Gotcha. So now, um, what is the, what is the atmosphere of the school? Could you give me a little sense of, uh, you know, what uh, Wingate is all about? Well, it's, it's beautiful here. Um, you know, our campus is beautiful, but I think what really makes it special is the people. And I started feeling that in my interview process last fall, um, but now being here, being around our student athletes and coaches on a day-to-day, -day, and then again, our partners across campus as well. So the feel that you get is, uh, you know, everyone is, you know, really focused on their academics. You can see students walking around campus, going to their classes, but also enjoying the social aspects aspects and the opportunity to, whether it's in the dining hall or one of the food options, or as they're making their way to the residence halls, or obviously at our athletic events as well, have a chance to engage and build those relationships that you're going to have for a lifetime with their classmates. Um, and then also, I'll say what I've also noticed is that everyone is really supportive of athletics and wants us to be successful. Um, and so I most of that mindset was done by my predecessor and as the university, um, you know, it has been so great athletically, um, but I can see it in everything that we do that they think, you know, hey, how is this going to Im impact athletics? How, what can we do to make sure that athletics has what it needs to succeed and keep graduating student athletes. Uh, for example, we hosted the South Atlantic Conference uh, basketball quarterfinal games for both the men and the women. We were the only school in our institution to host both men's and women's wow. um, be in that position of, um, you know, have doing so well in the regular season. And our campus made the decision to allow students to get in free. Now on the back end, those, that had to be paid for by student affairs, but it, because it, be, it could be an event and it could be something they could go to and make memories and school spirit and take pride in our programs was something that the campus bought into to be part of that. And again, that was just part of March Madness a couple of weeks ago. And we just love that. And, and I think it just speaks volumes about being uh, supporting athletics and then really just being aware of how does that play into the student experience um, to have these great athletic teams too. So now tell me a little bit about uh, the student athletes. What, um, what type of student athlete does uh, Wingate look for? Uh, highly academic, uh, they have to be really great in their sport. Uh, give, me, give me some specifics of you know, what, what type of student athletes come to the school. 
Yes. So, and, and I've been uh, really focused in on the profile of our student athletes since I started. And I can tell you, it's really easy to see that they are academically inclined. I mean, we had a 3.21 department GPA last fall. So that's across all 23 sports, um, you know, nearly 700 student athletes contributing to that 3.21 GPA for the fall. Um, so definitely academically inclined. And they understand that their goal is to make their path toward graduation while getting to play the sport that they love at a very high level. Um, obviously we have national championships, regional championships, conference championships under, under our belt historically. And so athletically, those student athletes also have to come in with that challenge of living up to the program history and wanting to achieve further history for their program. You know, we just won our first baseball national championship last year. You know, so those students come in motivated academically to contribute to the, the great standard that we have there, but then knew that they wanted to come in and do something that had never been done. And, and that's what they achieved. And so what, what, how I would define our student athletes first is motivated. They both in the classroom, in their sport, and then they do a really good job giving back to our community too. So our student athletes have to have balance and also prioritize all the different parts that are so important to being a student athlete. Now, the coaches there, uh, do they recruit all over the country, all over the world? Do, do you get students from everywhere? Yes, we have international student athletes and student athletes domestic um, from um, all over the country. Um, obviously, it's, sometimes it's drilled into where um, some different places in the country that the sport is a little more prevalent um, or, um, you know, like some rosters kind of favor the areas of the country that that sport um, is, again, more prominent. Um, but it's really neat to see um, that we can draw a lot from, and again, we're in the Charlotte metro area, so we can draw a lot from this this area in our great state of North Carolina, um, and obviously the other states that touch us when you think about, you know, South Carolina and uh, some of the other states in this region, um, but also at the same time, we are a national draw for student athletes um, to come and, again, play at a high level, know they're going to be competing when you talk regionally within the conference and nationally, and get a great education um, in one of the, you know, many majors that will propel them to success after graduation. So now a lot of parents uh, talk about uh, monies at the college level and division two is a little bit different than division one and division three. So what, um, what does a division two uh, student athlete, what are some of the opportunities that they have uh, at a division two school with monies or scholarships or whatever? Sure. Well, Division Two has what we call the partial scholarship model, meaning we do give athletic scholarships and the coaches are responsible for all of those, maintaining the budget, but then also identifying the talent and the amount. And so that athletic scholarship, the fact that it's partial, allows student athletes to also have scholarship dollars that come from something else, you know, whether that's their academic merit coming in from high school, whether it's something related to a club or a major that they're part of, um, or obviously Obviously, you know, a local, uh, someone who might like their Kiwanis club or someone um, from their hometown. So that partial scholarship model gives our student athletes balance, meaning we understand that athletics is not the only thing paying for you to get this degree. And so you get that balance between all those different pieces that make up your experience. And so we love the fact that it's athletic scholarship. So they're always looking to achieve something, maintain it. Um, and then we can recruit them out of high school with the athletic scholarship piece, but also know that that balance is automatically built in because there are other fundings and other sources, like you were saying, with the scholarships and the merit and other um, academic and involvement scholarships that they can earn to be packaged together to help cover the cost of attendance. Now, you said that there's uh, 23 sports and then a 24th coming this, this year. Um, what are some of the sports and what are some of the schools you play against? Sure. So um, we have uh, we're in the South Atlantic Conference for all of our sports and swimming is coming into the South Atlantic Conference next year. Um, and so some of the institutions in um, the South Atlantic Conference include Queens University. Uh, they include uh, University of Virginia at Wise, Limestone, 
Coker. Um, we also have Anderson. You know, we have there were in both mostly South Carolina, North Carolina, and then Virginia. Um, but we were a large conference with a lot of different institutions. Um, you know, and so it's really great to see that variety um, of where we compete and then also who we compete against. And then the sports that we have. So in the fall, we have um, volleyball, football, both soccers, and then we have the full cross country with uh, indoor and track and field programs. So we have indoor and outdoor track and field for both men and women. Um, we have both basketballs, both swimmings. Um, we also have both golfs, both tennis, both lacrosse, um, baseball, softball. Like I said, field hockey is starting next fall. And I think I captured them all. Hopefully um, I didn't leave anyone off, um, but 24 total sports. Um, and, we, and we just love the balance that we have year round, you can find a team competing at a very high level, um, again, against the South Atlantic conference foes that I mentioned, some of them, and then within all of division two, um, you know, it, it's, it's just, uh, it's an honor that we, I believe it's 14 straight Eccles cups, which is the highest ranking program in the South Atlantic. When you take all sports into consideration, we have won that. Um, so we have a very well-rounded and, um, and all of our sports, uh, compete at a high level um, and we just take such great pride in that now do you see um do you see a lot of uh equal in in men's and women's sports is, is it pretty much equal when 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 they when the students are coming to the school so our treatment of them is definitely um, equal as far as, you know, with their experience and making decisions that are putting them in the best position to graduate and, and for their sport decisions also, um, you know, the as far as the breakdown, I mean, our institution has more women attending it than men. Um, as we know, it's kind of a trend in higher ed um, is kind of trending that way at all institutions. Um, and our athletic programs, um, we try to, you know, maintain uh, the, the balance that we can there, but also while trying to have competitive squads. Um, and obviously when, you know, you have a football that is a very large amount of male student athletes, then we have a lot of female sports as well um, to be able to treat them equally and have them have as great access to everything that we have, whether you're talking the weight room, how we, uh, you know, the, the gear and the uniform that they get, the way that we travel, and then obviously the academic opportunities that present themselves. Now, um, when students come into the, the uh, student athletes come into the sport, is, is there other things that, that, that you gear them towards like uh, networking and uh, jobs after, after the sport and, and that kind of stuff? Yes, um, we will always focus for them on the transferable skills that they get from sport and how that really sets them apart from um, people when they're graduating and looking for their first opportunity or even when you're you know, looking for a career shift later in life. The things that they have done as a team to achieve goals, to take direction, to be self-motivated, set their schedule, you know, time management. They have so many of those transferable skills and we will always hone in on those to make sure that they understand the market of of those. But then as a campus, we also have um, career week going on next week. And I'm excited for my first career week because um, that includes uh, speakers coming in to talk about personal branding, uh, resume review. Um, and obviously the personal branding also um, goes into the name, image, and likeness piece with the NCAA student athletes now. So we're really capitalizing and, and highlighting that. Um, but then also we're just teaching them interview skills and how to you know, evaluate benefits and look for opportunities. Uh, we have an etiquette dinner that we're having um, for students um, to be able to understand, you know, what does that look like when you're at an interview dinner or when you're after you're hired and you're at a dinner and working through the different etiquette pieces there. And then of course, we've got that speed networking and interviewing um, opportunities for them as well. Wow. So really trying to set them apart and ready to excel after graduation. And there's also components related to furthering their studies so they can learn about grad school interviews and different pieces that also could be if they want to explore studies before going into the workforce. Now, you, you brought up uh, name, Im image, and likeness. Um, that is a big topic at, at all the universities these days. Right. Um, what, what's the difference between a Division I, Division II, and Division III? Is, is there any differences in it? So uh, having been at division one and, um, and division two, you know, I can tell you that, you know, we handle it the same um, as far as an, the educational component. 
the reporting component so we know what our student athletes are doing. And then really it's up to the student athletes. I mean, it is their opportunity to figure out what makes sense to market myself, where are the good fits that align with my brand, my values, the things that I want to represent um, with, uh, with myself um, in, in this space. You know, it's so new um, that we still have a lot of student athletes feeling their way through or seeing that, you know, their, their, um, their friends and colleagues at other schools or at our own school, hey, they're doing this or this is making making sense. And so it's really a fun time. I mean, I find that that's something that just keeps us on our toes as administrators, because we want to provide the best support we can there for our student athletes. And so that means I need to make sure that our staff is up to speed on the latest and greatest, and then more specifically, kind of know the trends in our area, in our region, in our conference, so that we can um, make sure that uh, we're just presenting all the options that are out there for the student athletes. Uh, but then it's their, it's their show. They get, they get to decide what they want to do, and they've got to work through it in their process, too. Now, it, it, that, that makes me think of something. Is there a, some type of class that, that, that people have, are giving to these students? So there are partners that will, um, you know, do educational pieces, whether it's modules online or, uh, you know, a virtual type event that's more uh, in person, but virtual. Um, and then, or uh, I'm sure some are starting to go to in-person options now, um, as since our COVID environment is um, a little less um, uh, or is more open, I should say. Sure. Um, and so, um, so there are a lot of different opportunities I think are going to continue to present itself as the COVID environment becomes more open where we can do those types of um, knowledge. But the biggest piece that we see, and it's actually a former student athlete that's coming in to talk about branding and um, you know just alignment with your brand because that has so much to do with the name, image, and likeness piece too. Sure. Now, um, when they come to the school, um, is there a whole process that the student athlete takes? Do they, do, do they just automatically report to the, the coach? Uh, do they get their room right away? Do, does the student start earlier than everybody else? How, how does it all work at, at the school? So they'll go through um, the standard orientation and process and, you know, deposit and then get their information to figure out where they want to live. You know, the coaches, uh, you know, do make recommendations or try to pair them up with, um, you know, their, their teammates or someone who might be from their same area that's going to be their future teammate, you know, have that opportunity there because that impacts. You want someone who's going to be on your same schedule and understand kind of the time demands that you might have um, when you look at your roommates and, and, and those pieces. Um, but as far as working through the progress, process to be here as a Wingate student in the fall. They're going to come to orientation. There is going to be a student athlete specific section for those parents of within um, at the orientation. And then we're going to have some virtual meetups for our new incoming um, student athletes also. And then when they start to report in the fall, we touch base with them as a department. Now, absolutely, the coach is going to give them the majority of the information that's athletic specific. But mm -hmm. I personally will be meeting with every team, talking to them about kind of standards and expectations and also the opportunities that they have to continue to represent us. And here's, you know, here's who we are and here's what your experience can look like. And so we, we really build on the great um, program that the institution has for Wingate, like how to be a bulldog, all those different pieces that we have in general for orientation and for uh, transitioning to Wingate from high school. But then we also drill down on the specific athletic pieces, the NCAA eligibility center, the physicals, you know, all the different pieces that are part of their student athlete onboarding also. Gotcha. And, and that takes them, do you do that every year or is it just, is it just the first year when they come to school? So every year is the orientation program, but then, at, uh, and so that would be for the newcomers, but then every year we will meet with each team to start the year um, and just talk about uh, things that are the latest and greatest, also educate them on any new or updated NCAA rules that would you know, be applicable to their sport or just all student athletes. Um, so we will always have touch bases with them, but that first year we really um, just enhance and add the athletic component to what's already going on for them to their transition to campus as a first year or transfer. So now you said that there were about 700 student athletes there? Correct. 
Okay, and and how how many students are at the school uh, altogether? Is there is it a pretty large school as a Division two school? Um, yes, I mean we're we're right around like four thousand, so we're right around probably the um, a, a good number of Division twos are similarly set up. Okay, so so uh, with the students being there, um, and and you said that there's a lot of community service. Um, what type of things do the student athletes get involved in? Well, we actually won, or we came in second for the NCAA Division of Two Award of Excellence this year. And that was all based off of our United Way Day of Service, Day of Caring that we did last August. Um, and so that was the majority of our student athletes um, gave back to our local county United Way through different projects um, specific to that day of caring that they do as a um, you know, national initiative. Um, and then we had our student athletes as part of those and they were doing different service projects and interacting with people in our community. And again, that had us finish in second place out of all division two schools for the award of excellence last uh -huh. year. But then we also have um, the student athletes have opportunities all the time to interact with our local community, whether they're going to some of the local schools that are within walking distance and reading to classrooms. Obviously, we were doing that virtually for a while. Um, we also, uh, it was really fun that our basketball programs got to take part in uh, the books and brackets program that our um, local schools do uh, here in, the, in our county um, and, and, and really energizing student athletes or students at those local schools to read and then they tie it into the March Madness piece. So our student athletes specific to basketball were able to, you know, really engage with those students and encourage them to, hey, keep reading books and move forward in the bracket. That's what it's all about. And so um, that was a really neat initiative that, that they did also. Um, so there's always ways for them to be part of community um, and us giving back because ultimately, the community gives us so much by coming to our events and supporting our student athletes um, while they play their sport. Well, we're coming to the end of our show. And uh, usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents and the students that are watching this? What, what advice would you like to give them? So my, my big point of advice would just be that if, if you want to play athletics um, and be part of a team in college, there is a fit out there for you. Now, you have to do your research, both, you know, hey, does it have the major I want? Is it the social environment that I want? Is it affordability? Is this an institution that I, you know, I can attend? Um, and, you know, figure out all of those things and then determine, hey, is this the level that I think I can play at? And, um, you know, that and that takes, you know, a little bit of nuance to figure out and then determine and reach out, you know, whether you've already been accepted to the university or it's someone that you're interested in, you can contact the coaching staffs to see, hey, is this going to be a fit? Um, and ultimately you can find the right fit, but you have to you know, probably go to the campus, look at it and say, hey, can I see myself walking around here? Can I see myself competing at this level? You know, watch watch games on uh, the streams online, on YouTube, wherever they might be and say, hey, can I see myself competing at that level? And then ultimately, can I see myself thriving on this campus? And then, uh, you know, having that ability after I earn my degree to do what I what I'm choosing to do with my career. And so um, I believe that there is a fit out there for everyone if that is a part of um, you know what you want your college experience to be. Well, great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Anthony. I appreciate it and uh, hope that all the viewers have a great rest of their day too. Good. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.